Good afternoon, everybody. This is our January 23rd, 2024 edition of the Building Committee for the Horticulture Rebuild. And uh, Happy New Year. Uh, I just want to talk for a moment just because it's been a couple months now, and I know we have a couple newer faces at the table. Uh, I think it would be worth our while to stick around the table and introduce ourselves uh, and sort of the role that we're, we sort of represent. So I'm Andy Lincoln, over the superintendent. I'm Gary Clark, uh, construction manager for School House Construction. I'm Tom Berry from Keener Lockwood. I'm John Parrott. I taught here once upon a time along with James, and uh, now I represent the industry, both our culture and forestry. Uh, Jen Werner, former uh, community college and vocational ag teacher. Oh. I am on the advisory board for the program. Mark Nevin, I'm an architect and vertical constructor here at Smith. Joe Bianca, principal. Ellen Fantini, project manager with SMMA. Maddie Kuhlman, designer at SMMA. Matt Price, architect with SMMA. James. Oh, sorry. James on spot, one of the teachers in the program. I'm Melanie Chartier, I'm the Vocational Director. I'm uh, Sean Mahoney, Forest Park Specialist for the State of Massachusetts. I'm here to help everyone through this one process. Jim Moran, I'm Jay Moran again. Uh, Rick Laquadro was the Quadro and Suri Commercial General Contractor in Northampton. And I'm on the Board of Trustees and representing the Chair building. I think at this point I'll turn it over to Helen for the presentation. And sure, I did not move the clicker with me. I have. Oh, oh don't thank you. <laughs> it's not, never a reliable vehicle. All right, um, so I think we're going to um, back our way into the policy. Let's, let's talk about what, what we did today. Um, our, our team has been uh, here on site as well as in the area for a couple of reasons. One, we met with the City of Northampton um, and we had a tech review session, which is a precursor to submitting for the pre-development permits. That's site plan review, um, stormwater permitting, et cetera. It's something that obviously needs to happen um, in a timely fashion to not this up. It's been a very productive meeting with them. No bombshells, no unexpected questions. It was a good dialogue. So we do feel like we would be ready to Permits this week, and again, this is not the building permit, this is the site plan review and the rebuild. So that was good. And then came over here to campus, and we met with um, James and Joe and Melanie and Andy and um, a handful of wonderful students to really dig in uh, into deeper, more immersive uh, detail on the climbing structure. And um, we have some imagery from that that I will share with you. Uh, we did have the design development cost estimate done. Um, share that information with you. Talk about next steps. And so again, tech review was very smooth. Um, we had pre-submitted the drawing package. It is mostly focused on site elements, but the plans and, and sections, elevations were also included. Here we are with the level of development at DD. Um, again, just excerpted from the DD plans. Um, and then we move on. Um, I don't know, maybe Matt, you want to walk into the, uh, the climbing structure review we had this morning? So the, the climbing structure, I think, is probably the most one of the most unique pieces of this project in terms of making sure that it can support curriculum needs um, in terms of um, forestry. Um, and horticulture. So what we wanted to do was make sure that we had a good understanding of what the design of it should be. And the way for us to get there is really to talk to staff and students um, about what it was. And rather than looking at two-dimensional drawings, um, which we are here right now, um, we actually thought that the best way of getting a consensus understanding was using a virtual reality version of this model. Um, so the same exact model that you see here, um, and staff and students had the opportunity to 
put on the virtual reality headset and, and really look at um, what we were thinking of um, and what we we're thinking of was not exactly correct and that's that was really the expectation going in we knew that we didn't have it correct yet but um, I think we got some really good feedback um, from people being able to both look at what was on screen observing other people um, using the virtual reality um, environment and really had some good discussion about um, really critical topics like usability like safety um, how um, the log that would be located in the center of that piece um, would get replaced um, on, a, on a regular basis to be determined what that regular basis is. Uh, but we want to make sure that whatever is there is flexible um, in terms of allowing it to be uh, modified. Important also to understand what the scope of that is because it will be the subject of the grant um, funding um, that's already in place. So we know that there's a certain amount of funding that will go towards that. So we need to make sure that it's, it is right. Um, and that we understand sort of what aspects of the design can be put towards that grant. Um, so that's that's really what we did. Um, I don't know if the other slides is to have in, some understanding of just the, the surrounding space that's there. Um, what you see in the background around the climbing structure is the climbing tower, if you will, the vertical piece um, that extends up. Um, we have a 30 foot height of um, clear height in terms of uh, being able to climbing activities and speed climbing uh, to that elevation. Uh, we talked about where the uh, elevations and surrounding pieces of steel and sort of where rope attachments would be. Um, so we did get into a fair amount of detail with this and that was really the intent. And so we have a little bit of work to do um, now to go back and talk with our structural engineer, um, given the feedback that we received. Um, and I know that uh, staff and students are gonna do a little bit of research as well uh, to figure out what maybe the maximum size um, uh, log or trunk would be in there um, in terms of climbing because that will affect our structural design but I think we all have good action items coming out of that meeting um, in terms of getting us very close to um, what would be sort of the final design of that climbing structure. We might have a few more slides in there too just to give some perspective.
I believe the, the understanding is the generator that we have is doesn't have that capacity to also power us. So what's the current generator? Emergency lighting, basically the existing buildings. Are there any wheeled generators that could be available from this property at MassDOT and anything like that? It's a temporary generator. We're an eligible recipient of such things. Personal feeling. Uh, I'm just going to go out there and you can yell at me all you want, but 
Uh, as somebody who has to look at the overall budget, has to look at the entire campus, and has to look at the other capital needs that we have on campus, uh, I would not be doing my job if I did not say we should be looking at a metal, metal prefab building and we need to get the ball rolling like yesterday. Uh, that's where I stand. We can debate it, uh, but I open it up to others. So could you explain to me how we got there? Because in our last meeting, I remember the, the Delta being more like 100,000 is off the top of my head. So now you're saying it's closer to a million. Right, so I used the metal prefab the structure cost that we were looking at back in November was just north of three million. So I replaced that three million with the construction cost that we see in the estimate was 4.1 million for the wood construction. Uh, so I just replaced those two. The site work, uh, back in November we were looking at site work cost of 994,000. Uh, the estimate that we are looking at as of last week, the site work is down to 599. So there's a big savings with the site work. Yep. So sort of the overall general requirements, general conditions, so on building permitting, insurance, overhead and profit. Back in November we were looking at like a 20% markup. Uh, now this past week when I looked at those figures it's like a 15.5% markup. So there was an additional savings there. Other differences from November to last week. Uh, design contingency has come down. Uh, so back in November we were looking at design contingency of approximately 406,000. Uh, last week is down to 238,000. Uh, however, escalation for construction back in November we were looking at 97,000. It is up to 112,000. So I was trying to use last week's estimate numbers, but then overlaying the just the metal prefab construction number. Something tells me it's just not apples to apples. If it were, I, I would totally agree with you. The metal building saves us a million dollars. No question. Let's do it. But I have the feeling there are a lot of other moving parts there. Like the, the savings in the site prep. Is that necessarily because of the metal building? No. So that savings was assuming the wood structure actually. Right. So help me just do the math of how we save them, how going to the metal building is going to save us a million dollars. The big difference would be the actual construction cost of, of the middle building. Back in November, we had a $3,068,741 figure. Last week, the estimate we're looking at right now is $4,161,300. See those numbers in uh, Okay. Is part of that that going to DD? just now have more detail in the building? Is yeah. that necessarily metal to wood, or is that just more detail in the drawings? I think it's more detail in the drawings. So the DD drawings we advanced, assuming the light wood frame construction, based off of the guidance that we got at the last board committee meeting. Um, and I think it's just worth noting that the estimator, when they gave us the price at SD for the light wood frame building, we didn't have a level of detail there. We just asked them to say, give us a typical price for what a light wood frame structural system would be for the building. And, and they gave us the best number for what that was, and that's what resulted in that sort of roughly 100k delta between the approaches. What they've done now is actually estimated um, member sizes, member spacing that the structural engineer has developed given the spans of where we are. Um, and so there was a result delta that it was not as cost effective um, in terms of the approach to the system, potentially because it's um, a taller building maybe than um, like, like a traditional number that we asked for as a design that they were using as a basis, which we just didn't have the ability to understand until we got to this next level of detail. So I think that is, is really at the root cause in terms of why there's a delta now that we're seeing. And what is that delta? Just tell me. I, I haven't seen it. I, I don't have it off the top of my head. In the other so is it almost a full million dollars? Or I don't think it was the million. I don't think this, the, the full million dollars was just in the delta between the prefab middle building. But it, it was considerable. I think it was seven hundred thousand or somewhere in that range. Thank you. Was, were there any particular elements to go all wood that were especially expensive? So the I saw long lattices. Were those particularly difficult to come up with? That if those were metal, that would eliminate a, a especially expensive thing that just is better executed as metal. And so then we can come to that hybrid placing. 
where it's like it's a stick built thing, but we're not going to do that like unicorn horn thing that is especially hard to make out of wood. I think it's a good question. It's something we could we could actually look at. Um, there were some cases where we already made that type of compromise in terms of the design, the columns that were down the main hallway because they're taking loads from the two roofs. Those are steel columns um, as opposed to wood. Um, I think the roof trusses are actually fairly economical if those are the lattice pieces that you're referring to, but yep. it, it's something that we could certainly ask the estimator to see okay. whether or not uh, there are cost savings to be had. So another overlay that I think is worth noting is that there are uh, timber producers in Massachusetts, but there's no smelters in Massachusetts. And so we can make wood siding here. We can make wood uh, paneling inside here in Massachusetts. Those are surficial. So it's conceivable it could be a metal framed building that has Massachusetts elements to it. I think that's important to recognize that perhaps a sort of a hybrid middle ground is a possibility. There is also a real possibility next, uh, or in, in March, the governor's coming out to make an announcement to support the forest products industry uh, with about 50 million in support. And it's conceivable, I don't have any assurances, but it's conceivable that to help a vocational school that lost uh, an acid due to fire could be something that also gets announced as a support. Hence, we have representation here. They can't make any promises now, but there is an enthusiasm to support the wood industry. The reality is, if we go back to earliest conversations, we're talking about carbon, that wood is sequestered carbon, steel is carbon cost. So what are we trying to teach? And so I think it's important that wood be well reflected within this building, whether it be simply the superficial elements or the structural elements. Wood can do it, and wood tells a story, and I think we need to be mindful of that and not just pay lip service to it. There's a lot more to it. Insulation, windows, all those other elements are all decisions and compromises. But I think it's important to just be mindful of the industry and our community and who we're preparing these young people to become, train them, and show them. This building here, there's very little wood right here, but it could be different. It doesn't have to be simple. John, you mentioned previous meetings, some concessions from the wood industries or grant money or yep. whatever, donations. Yep. Um, are you able to confidently say there's money there and about, excuse me, about how much? And you throwing out numbers of five, six hundred at one point. So I think that that's conceivable. Can I make any promises? Right. No. And so with my comment, and free bucks, you can get a cup of coffee. <laughs> so that doesn't help any by February. But no, I appreciate your your comments, and that, yes, this is all what we need to digest and figure out. But we are running out of time. Sure. Is reality, the Commonwealth yeah. willing to step up and pay the difference to do what they're talking about? To use sequestered carbon, renewable materials. Are they willing to pay the difference? Because we are all being asked to do that in our own lives. To, to invest in uh, air source heat pumps or newly powered vehicles, and frankly, they cost more. And so public money has to facilitate that with rebates, refunds, or programs. And so is the Commonwealth willing to do that in an educational environment, TPD? And maybe they're just gonna be a dollar short a day later. That's possible and still going to Oh, that's a great, that's a great point. But again, an unknown, an unknown. Absolutely, yep, yep. John, is that a fair estimation that like, no promises can be made? There is interest, but whether there's uh, deliverables is, uh, is an unknown. You can't say yes. To yeah, there's, there's some internal discussion, obviously, interest in supporting the school. Um, but that, it's a question of what does the school need? I think that's, that's an open question. Uh, if and the delta was 700, like that's part of Sean's go away. Like, what's the delta? What's the need to do this at? Sure, what are the elements, how much wood, how much is it spending locally, these are all good questions, and then I think, um, you know, you're on a tight timeline, so that is, that's there, so we need a decision soon, if, if there was going to be some assistance. It'd be great to have a breakout to, to run up the flagpole in, in the EDA to say, if for three quarters of a million, this is what we can do, and there's an announcement coming up where the governor's going to be standing behind a podium in front of a 
propeller puncher, UMass Amherst. It could be a story. That's pretty tantalizing. But maybe the money's not there, maybe the interest isn't there, or the timeline just isn't off. So it sounds to me like there's a building that can get built if you know if we can pull the rabbit out of the hat by February 13th, then maybe the building can be different. Um, I'm also in, in trying to get to apples to apples here. So in the last meeting, which was SD, we asked you to move forward the life frame, the cost increase, which is totally understandable. That always happens. Uh, but now we are still looking at what I would understand to be an SD price for the metal building. Is there the possibility that if we say, yeah, now go with metal building, that we're going to see a similar increase? always possible I think yeah. as you as you said things as we get more detail we, right. price tends to go up that's also why the design contingency tends to come down because as we get more detail it's supposed to account for that and sort of match it, it doesn't always work out that way um, I will say that with the prefab metal building we did actually reach out to manufacturers during schematic design and we got a comparative price um, the estimator still used their own price but they were at least informed and we knew that it was in the ballpark. Okay. So I, would, I feel a little bit better in terms of how the metal building number came to be versus um, the lightwood frame because we did that on a fairly quick turnaround because the request came in um, and it was dollar per square foot versus someone looking at the specific uh, geometry that's on this. Thank you. So the current um, project stands for the existing greenhouse will remain at this time and however we move forward we'll hopefully be able to add on to the end of the building that extra space we took out that shown in other renderings it's it's the greenhouse and the classroom yeah. and the uh, yeah. garage One classroom. Yeah, and the head house so it's yeah. there's a complex there yeah no. Is there any demo costs that have to be accounted for to destroy the old footprint? Is that needing to go away? Or is it like hard parking? <laughs> so I, I really, when we first started this journey, the, the thought was to demo. Yeah. And have it all new. And then I think when the, the realization became more clear that we just going to afford all of the new construction, uh, the discussion was then why we have a demo, but we could potentially still use for a while. So uh, right now, as of today, is not to demo what we have existing. Uh, it will be to build what we're talking about new, continue to use the garage space, the one classroom, the head house, and the greenhouse. Uh, concerns obviously would be potential renovation cost to get that building to, to last an extra of years. Uh, but we're going to be demoing it at this point. The only thing that we could demo would be that the back concrete slab. And and that's what garage. I was talking about. I didn't know if you were obliged to do that or if it's just hard parking. Yeah. Which is what that's up for discussion. And that's any renovations that we may need to do, we certainly can do in house like we've done all these other projects. And, um, so, what is the feelings of leaving that concrete slab there, like John says, it seems to have some use? Mark, James? Well, would you the, like to see it? The go? parking part did until we dug a bunch of holes in it, you know, where the, the slab that you can park on currently, the, the raised portion, you know, we were told at some point we couldn't really use it because the railings didn't necessarily meet engineering code. I, I think the reality is the plan is going to dictate what happens in that area because that becomes the, the entrance and exit of the complex. Yeah. So I don't know that we know the answer to that question. Okay. For that particular part of the mm -hmm. building that you're talking about, the footprint. Well, I do want to say that what we discussed today, based on Berkshire Design Group's analysis of the accessibility of the path leading down to the new building, it would be optimal to get rid of that slab because we need the space to, to not require the address on okay. the pathway. Which, Just the slab. Which slab? The slab that was the old parking bar. Sticks with yeah. yeah. But the back out. classroom doesn't have to be removed. Right. But right. probably right. should have railings. It has railings, but we 
be ideal if we could bring it up to code so we can utilize it yeah. as an outdoor space. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, we'll look at that when we get past yeah, these. We'll we'll get get it's a renovation. Yeah, which, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Some people use for a number of years. After five years, I'm sure. That's a flexibility that you could stockpile it. Yeah, like, oh, we paid the painters, they haven't done it. <gasps> Here's the, the Which we wouldn't recommend that you do. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, but fair. But, but like, yeah. If we got down to you know, brass tacks, the last finish work could conceivably be. I think the functionality wise, you want the building to be usable by fall. That's the real reason. So I see it. On uh, the last uh, timeline, I mean, it, it looks like you pushed the. Uh, kick off off by a month. Uh, and you say construction starts on that day, but it's not up there. But do I remember seeing that the actual like demolition or site work and construction would actually start until after school was out? Was well, that on there, the last one? Uh, I don't think so. I think um, I think we always assumed that this site would be fenced off and made safe. Okay, and so that would start right start. away. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And just for my planning, you know. No, I know. Yeah. I think ideally you do want them starting before well, school, yeah. but uh, it, it also would be easier. Yeah. Not necessarily. For me, not, not we can easily work around. That'd be less clean and work. There you go. <laughs> That's the right side. <laughs> Sounds like it's a long ways off. As the design, yeah, the bidding takes several weeks, and then before the bidding and all the, the, the CD, all the permitting, it's it's my my fear. And this is a doable for stick build. It's a doable to be done. By One year. Um, for info for tonight's BOT meeting, um, documents are well enough along, we could give them to a local contractor to give us an independent estimate. We have to pay for it through the conflict of interest or whatever. Well, the approximately, we talked about this this past Friday, a budget would be somewhere at eight to ten thousand dollars. Oh, it comes out of the $6 million. Yeah. And the battle would be a bigger bill? Not necessarily. I think the information we're getting in that, correct me 
get them wrong. I mean, they, it is, um, there's a portion of it that's de delegated design. So then they have to take it and do their engineering counts. Our engineer does a certain amount. Um, I think we were coming out sort of evenly with respect to sample. It would feel faster. It would feel faster. Exactly. Right. Because exactly. you said something like 14 weeks, right? I thought. In terms of getting the getting building, building delivered before two weeks, or is it the construction before two weeks? No, I think it's in that range of the case of the 14 weeks in terms of starting the process with them and still to see something short. Right, and then it would have to be constructed. But the erection will also go over in terms right. of because it's, it's so uh, the time frame overall will be the same or similar. I think similar, it, potentially the local contractor, I think we could get their schedule in, input as well, which might be valuable um, as an approach. Um, just to validate or understand what's and in how um, so the documents are executed showing the, the wood framing and the wood siding and then how would we address them giving an alternate price on a pre-engineered metal building so we don't have any say info they would go like you guys did go to a supplier, vendor, for rebuilding, whatever, and say this is what we're looking at. Um, and we have the communication that we went back and forth with. I think we have the section is still the same of the building. It was just the length of the building got shorter um, versus what we were talking about. Did you talk to? Was I think it was Setco that was or Setco. Um, Setco. C e t c o. However, it's pronounced. Um, they were the one that was most responsive and actually gave us dollar numbers in terms of fabrication. Did you talk direct to the manufacturer? Yes. yes. just speak to how energy efficiency compares between the two options metal prefab and wood just in terms of uh, overall cost per year say just generally speaking just to refresh my memory so I think there will be an incremental um, additional operating costs and incremental additional energy consumption um, as, as sort of the driving factor behind that um, given that the prefab metal building a separate um, set of envelope um, R value requirements for just acknowledging that the building is built in a different way and so it's still completely code compliant in terms of energy code where we are so it's, it's opt-in stretch code here right mm -hmm. um, versus uh, the wood frame construction that is a little bit maybe more traditional in terms of what the energy code is expecting um, but it, it's really in between those two levels of code compliance that I think the Delta exists um, so it, it's, it, we can't say that it's a completely sort of neutral uh, decision in terms of energy consumption and operating cost, uh, but it, it's not order of magnitude different. It's not like we're going to be building an, an inefficient building okay. um, as a prefab metal building. It's just going to be slightly less than what it would be. Thank you. So in a nutshell, the operating cost, energy-wise, probably be more than the metal building? So the more, yes. Sorry if I, I misspoke that there in terms of in terms of up and down, but yes. Well, <laughs> you addressed <laughs> it in a roundabout way. Yeah, I think at this point, uh, I feel like uh, it's pretty clear that the wooden building would be nicer in a number of ways over the long term, but we can't afford it. So that's what we go. We're hoping. Yep. Um, if you could hold the breath until. February 13th, that might give Boston a chance to ride in on a way towards. I just you know, yeah. that's their drop dead. If they can't yeah, come up with something, then. John, all options are on the yep. table. Yep, yep. I'm not discounting your remarks by any means. I appreciate them. What do you say? We all set? SMMA for today. Thank you.
those you've seen. So that's hopefully what we'll end up with. <laughs> yeah. Minus the greenhouse. Eventually. That's, yeah. Eventually. Eventually. Yes. Minus the greenhouse Minus. to start. Yeah, both versions. There you go. It all you flexing on the notes. So what? The roof. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Do that again. Oh. <laughs> so that's uh, there's no 3,000 square feet in round numbers. We were almost at 10 with original footprint, right? Right. We're at yeah. eight now. Yeah. And We've always excluded the greenhouse from that square footage. Right. The greenhouse is, I think, approximately 1,800 square feet somewhere in that value. But it wasn't, it wasn't gross construction or gross floor area in terms of construction. The greenhouse is a different animal in terms of what it takes to build it. Is it. Is it fair to assume that the existing building, the existing classroom, the greenhouse, and all that is usable? The fire marshal didn't say you can't be in here. You can use it for a year, but then you're done. There's no stipulation. Okay, good. Good. So it's still a functional space. Yeah, we've got a functional space. Yes. Yeah. Improvements would be welcome, but are not necessary. There are some improvements that are necessary. Well, I mean, but we are aware of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's but there's not an axe hanging over get it. Done. <laughs> And for you guys' money conscious side, the program is removing all the trees that are in the way, hopefully to save us money. And we have a willing group of students, but do anything else that might help in that regard too, as far as you know, pickaxes and shovels and you know, if there's anything else we can do to help get some of the ready-made costs, you know, ready to build costs down, we'd be happy to do it. <laughs> Hey, just to bring the committee up to speed, I mean, since we met last time, remember, uh, you know, the comment was made that we were talking about the slab and you know, we still have punch holes in it. Uh, so that was some of the, the testing that we had to do in the soil, some places of water testing. And uh, the good news is, it seems like we kept getting bad news after bad news after bad news. Some of the good news was the soil came back uh, okay. Uh, there was no contaminants in the soil that we had to deal with. So uh, that was positive news. Uh, I'm not sure if this is positive news, but back to the students and you know, our instructors uh, getting ahead of the curve and trying to move some trees. Uh, I think we've got a graveyard of some stuff uh, buried a few generations ago. Um, so we'll keep that in the back of our mind as we continue to dig that we can do the other things that we find. So I said we need to find some valuable things. I don't know if it's sell them. So that's the latest as far as soil. That was good news. I think it's also just great to point out the fact you talked about the savings on the site costs. I mean, some of that is directly related to what James was yes. doing as well in terms of being able to take out some of the trees and not put those costs onto the general contractor. So uh, there's a lot of uh, that effort that's reflected in the current number where we are. How many, um, how many trees are we talked to? Well, we moved three. We hand dug them and moved them. We have four large remaining ones left and then more down the road at some point um, you know like for the, the, to accommodate the addition the remaining trees between the two buildings would have to go they don't have to leave right now for this building to be built some of them to give you an idea so it would be like four more full-size trees down the road and is it worthwhile to have the students do it as a learning experience and getting the wood oh, yeah. for, for your pile type of thing because off the top of my head through little no cost of the site contractor coming in and taking out some trees they're just going to come in and pictures but there are a lot of them they come in with some large scale they're pretty big stuff. and northern's going to cut them down so northern's going to bring its brain in it's going to make a, a show of it have it an educational opportunity, it won't take long for a crane to take more. And that's going to happen. And the subsequent old wood is going to get milled locally and it's available back to the school. Right. So it's also good therapy for the current students to kind of help say them goodbye to stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, good point. I did want to also note that the general conditions, general requirements also went down in part because of Crystal, that the space um, below in 
superintendents go in and do some site analysis, site trailers. So that is another one that's reflected in the current Okay. Okay. Anything else? Appreciate your time and effort.